Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, back with another video. So, it's Monday night, and yeah, let's talk some boxing. So, while everybody in the YTBC seems to be pretty much um, engulfed by this whole Connor Ben situation, that seems to be the only thing that anybody's talking about at the minute, we seem to have forgotten that coming up this weekend, we have the rematch of all rematches. You know, the fight that everybody's looking forward to, the fight of the century. George Cambosos versus Devin Haney too. Uh, George Cambosos, obviously, this is his opportunity to get revenge for Devin Haney coming over to his backyard, whipping his ass and taking his titles. Um, yeah, let's talk about this fight. So, in all seriousness, you know, in all seriousness, th th this is a... The more I think about it, this is probably the most pointless rematch in the history of boxing like i'm not even kidding i mean there's a reason nobody's talking about this fight there's a reason why most people don't even seem to be aware that it's happening uh, it's gone completely under the radar and when you look at the complete contrast to how big the first fight was you know going into that fight it was a stadium fight it was a you know the biggest event in australian boxing history uh, devin haney had a lot of fans cambosos had a lot of new fans off the back of the Tiafimo fight, and they were going back and forth, and, you know, a lot of people's opinions were divided on who they thought was going to win, this, this, that, and the other, it was a big fight, going into this rematch, nobody's talking about it, this fight's gone completely under the radar, I don't think I've seen a single prediction video, I don't think I've seen any sort of podcast or anything, I think the only thing that I did see was an interview with Luda Bella, didn't listen to the whole thing, I just, I, I seen it pop up and I, I caught snippets of it where he was talking about the Conor Ben situation actually and someone actually asked him about this fight and even he seems to think that it's a complete waste of time and that really Cambosis has nothing to lose, you know, he, he's not expected to win, it's, it's pretty much a mismatch. Going into the first fight, you guys will know how I saw it. I saw that fight as a mismatch from day one, I never gave... George Cambosos a chance, um, I'm, I'm not like tooting my own horn here or anything, I'm, I, I wasn't alone in this, a lot of people who I interact with on here, you know, my usual viewing audience seemed to be mostly in agreement that the fight was pretty much a joke, that it was pretty much a manufactured outcome that was really set up to ensure that Devin Haney got those belts, essentially, you know, anybody who was even remotely a threat to him was removed, and George Cambosos, in retrospect, appeared to be the guy that they groomed to ensure that Devin Haney got those titles, essentially. So, that's pretty much how I saw it going in. I said from day one, the fight would go the distance. said from day one, Haney would win pretty much every round. And that's exactly what happened. He dominated every second of the fight, won easily. And George Cambosos pretty much embarrassed himself. Not just considering the fact that he lost... But considering all the talk in the build-up to that fight and how it was hyped up to be this huge event for Australian sporting history and how the undisputed title was on the line, this, that and the other. I, I mean, the way that he performed in that ring, it was like a... What, what it reminded me of, it's, it's it, as if you took a bottom-level amateur. Like, like, let, let's say you take someone who's had like three amateur fights and they're like 15 years old and they still haven't got their man strength and... They really don't know what they're doing. They're just flailing away because they haven't got the confidence to do what they do in sparring or what they do in the gym. So they just go in there and they swing wildly and they're always off balance. This, that and the other. You know, if you've seen guys fight in their like, first three or four amateur fights, that tends to be the case sometimes. George Cambosis, to me, that's what he looks like to me. He looks like an amateur, like a bottom-level amateur. No punching technique whatsoever. Very little power. Um absolutely horrendous balance he's just off balance all the time no defense whatsoever no jab um completely clueless about the fundamentals of boxing no guard um no head movement nothing complete like, like a statue just flailing away like, like standing there but his arms are moving and he's doing things but but he's he's right there to be hit and, and Devin Haney just couldn't miss it was like target practice, just hitting him with a jab all night, the right hand. Devin Haney did whatever he wanted in that fight, and he had complete and utter control of the fight from 
the opening bell through to the final bell. It was it was embarrassing. It really was. And the reason why I say that it's the most pointless rematch of all time potentially is because even though there has been a lot of rematches in boxing which have gone completely different to the first fight, I mean, boxing history is filled with situations where you had somebody who lost a fight badly and then came back to win the rematch. I mean, a good example of that is, you know, just off the top of my head when I think of British domestic level boxing, John McDermott, when he got knocked out in the first round by Matt Skelton, they had a rematch and he completely schooled Matt Skelton and won easily on points. Um, Carson Jones, when he stopped Brian Rose in the first round, controversially, you know, it was a premature stoppage, but nonetheless, he stopped him. And um, yeah, in, in the rematch, Brian Rose won considerably, like, like, like conclusively on points. Um, you know, Enzo Macronelli got controversially stopped in two rounds and he came back to win the rematch by knockout. So, you know, it, it does happen. We've seen situations where guys get stopped, where they get caught cold, they get blown away and then they come back to win. Or situations where they get outboxed and then they come back to win. But what I don't think I've ever seen before is I don't, I don't think I've ever seen a guy who is clueless and completely out of his depth and gets absolutely dominated for every second of every round, going 12 rounds, losing pretty much conclusively every round. At least that's how I saw it. I know that's not how the judges saw it, but that's how I saw it. I mean, I've never seen that before. You know, a guy just get absolutely dominated and controlled for 12 rounds and then make the necessary adjustments a few months later to come back and win the rematch. I've never seen that before. Especially when you consider that Haney's the bigger fighter, Haney's the stronger fighter, Haney's the better conditioned, Haney's the A side who has the promoter on his side, even though he's traveling for the fight. That's a result of a contract that he signed where he had to travel for the rematch. So, um, yeah, e even though it's, my point is, even though it's in Cambosis' backyard, it's Devin Haney's um, promotional setup. You know, it's top rank that, are, that I believe are in control of it. So, yeah, you know, De Devin Haney's not going to get shafted in Australia. I said this before the first fight, you know, he's, he's going to get a fair decision. And even though the scores were a little bit too close, I think that was more or less to just kind of hype the rematch. I don't think that that was necessarily hometown bias for George Cambosis, you know. So yeah, going into this rematch is completely pointless. Like I said, sometimes rematches don't go the same way, but I can't see a different outcome here. The only the only potential that I see for a, for a maybe a slightly different outcome is if Cambosis just completely sells out and goes out on his shield and goes looking for an early knockout because he can't outbox Devin Haney. Um, he can't stand with him and, and, and outwit him for 12 rounds behind a jab, you know, fancy down and in around the ring. It's not going to work. He's not that kind of fighter. He's far too basic. He's far too limited technically to fight like that. He has to get lucky and land something big early. But he doesn't really have that kind of power. I mean, how, how George Cambosos got anywhere near a world title, never mind an undisputed championship, how he ever got to that level is actually quite remarkable when you look at this guy and you look at how limited he is he's one of the most limited mandatory challengers I'd ever seen going into that Tiafimo fight but it obviously it, it turned out that Tiafimo was a complete and utter hilarious fraud and <laughs> I mean the fact that he lost to George Cambosos that's actually pretty hilarious when you think about it man when, when I think of this fight, I, I really, I really, I'm trying so hard to think of a fight that had an immediate rematch that was more pointless than this. Like, I've seen so many fights where I thought to myself, I'd like to see that again. You know, I'd like to see a rematch, and I, I just can't seem to think of a single one that's more pointless than this, you know? So, yeah, I, I don't really think I need to give much of a technical breakdown. I mean, I did that before the first fight. You've seen the first fight, I'm sure, if you're watching this video, and if you haven't, go and watch it and see what I mean. Like it was, it was an embarrassing domination. It really was. And George Cambosos, um, you know, his my games, you know, they didn't work, and uh, you know, nothing he tried worked. It was, it was, oh man, it was embarrassing. So, yeah, that that the only thing that's slightly, slightly intriguing to me is 
how Cambosos is going to approach this. Is he actually going to try and outbox Devin Haney and make all the technical adjustments that he needs to? Or is he going to go out there and is he just going to go ape shit and start swinging for the fences looking for an early knockout? Because as far as I'm concerned, that's his only chance, man. So yeah, I, I think the most likely outcome is um, he probably does try in the early rounds, takes a few of those right hands, you know, uh, gets um, fi finds himself on the end of the jab for a few rounds and then he, he, he just decides, you know what, I'm just going to coast here and not even try because I've got no chance. Um, he seems like that type of fighter to me. But if he does have the ambition where he really is just so determined to go in there and get his title back, Haney knocks him out and does so early, probably within five rounds because Cambosos has no defense and if he just goes out there and just starts swinging for the fences looking for an early knockout, he's going to get decked and he's going to get stopped. So that's pretty much how I see it. Another mismatch, the most pointless rematch in boxing history. I get it has to happen. It's a, it's a contracted rematch. Okay, that both guys signed the contract, right? Devin Haney agreed to, to go through with the rematch should he win the first fight. So it is what it is. I, I get why the fight's happening, but it's just pointless. You know, it's a waste of our time, really. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Uh, thanks for watching and God bless.